November already, guys. Where has the year gone? 2023 is just blitzing by. Welcome to the New Story Podcast. My name is Shrek. This is the home of interviews with legends from all over the planet, people that just love our spearfishing lifestyle. Today, it's uh, it's a great friend of mine from Western Australia. That's where he calls home now. It's, it's Bert Calder, the old man blue. Today, we geek out pretty hard on gear. We talk about weight harnesses, float lines, and a whole bunch of other wicked kit, including uh, his CSAC. It's probably the best catch bag going around. Uh, Bert makes some uh, some amazingly tough hard-wearing gear, um, and he makes it for really experienced Spiros, like people that don't muck around with gear. They don't take shortcuts. They love really well-made stuff. And uh, so Bert's the man. We're going to get into that in, uh, in just a second. Guys, um, before we get into the interview, I wanted to tell you about noobspiro.com. I don't know if you know, but there's a shop and there's a whole bunch of wicked gear up there. There's the books, there's 99 tips to get better at spearfishing, there's 99 Spiro recipes. There is the full Spiro Dad range, which uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but uh, the the logo is me in a pair of uh, Roman sandals. Uh, with a spear, uh, with a spear gun and float, and it just kind of celebrates that Spiro dad life. You know, um, getting your kids into the ocean is a, is a great pleasure. And uh, if you go there, you'll see Chris, one of our patrons up there, with one of the Spiro dad shirts on. Get into that. Also, the Jobfish tribute. Uh, there's a whole bunch of noob Spiro gear up there, guys. Check it out. Uh, the Do You Even Free Dive. Um, stickers and so on. So check that out at noobspirit.com. Also, if you want to leave me a voice message, uh, go to noobspirit.com, head up, head up into the Give Back menu and you'll see a Nooba Stories tab. Jump on that and you can leave me a three-minute voice message. I'd love to hear about your encounters, recent and more, me- or it doesn't have, they don't have to be recent, but memorable encounters with the tax man. Noobspirit.com, up there, uh, go to Nuba Stories and leave me a voice message, a story about your encounter with the tax man. Also, guys, if you are in that give back menu, there's another section there called Buy Us a Beer. And there's a couple of different ways you can support the podcast, but buying gear does that as well. So, hey, uh, if you're into that, you want to say thank you, you want to give back, that's where to do it. If you don't, there's never any obligation. The Noob Spirit podcast has and always will be uh, free. And I hope you just continue to froth out on it, take away as many actionable insights and tips as you can. But uh, here's a few actionable insights and tips. Let's get into it with Bert Calder, the old man blue. Here we go. Danny says, Adreno, you guys are ahead of the game. Price is very competitive. Customer service is fantastic. Speed of delivery from your warehouse is the best I've ever experienced. And everything I have purchased was in stock. Great experience. Highly recommend these guys for anything to do with what happens and what you need to get under the water. That review from Danny. Check him out at adreno.com.au. These guys do a fantastic job outfitting Noob Spiros from all over, particularly Australia. But check him out at adreno.com.au. You can save $20 on every purchase over $200. Not only can you use it online, but you can also use it in-store. They've got two stores in Brisbane. They've got Gold Coast, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth. Check them out. They are doing good things. adreno.com.au. Are you US-based? Looking for free diving, spearfishing gear, Neptonics is the best. Their online website so easy to use. If you've got any questions, Jerry and the team answer questions via phone, email. Anyway, they've got an easy contact form on the site. Uh, these guys are absolute legends. And uh, if they sell it, they believe in it, they back it, they use it themselves. It's tough gear that works. Visit neptonics.com. Use the code NOOB10 to save 10% on any order at neptonics.com. That's right, use the code NOOB10, N-O-O-B-10 on your next order. Save 10% at neptonics.com. Hey, g'day, Noob Spiro community. I'm joined by the uh, the ever talented Bert, uh, the old man blue, Western Australia. He's uh, he frosts on Spiro, and I think nearly as much as I do. Welcome back, Bert. Hey, welcome, mate. It's nice to see you again. Hey, it's, good. Yeah. it's been a while. It's a um, it's a good excuse to get to catch up with you because life's so busy. Um, you and I have been sort of catching up over the last few days about some of the things we've been up to and you have been a busy man since I chatted with you last. I think 
we did an episode back, I think episode 156, that was kind of like a full interview, and then I was over there in Western Australia, I stayed with you and your family, and got to have a look around the workshop and all the different things you do over there, and then we also did a bit of a trip uh, further north in WA over there, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, if people want to listen to those episodes of the Western Australia series, I think it was 208, 209, and 210, it was one of my one of my most favorite uh, trips I've ever done, I think, Bert, and, and you were an, an absolutely wonderful host, and, and so was your oh, wife, Narelle, mate. so thank you for having me. Yeah, it was lovely, mate. We really enjoyed it, all of us did. Yeah, cool. Uh, mate, as I mentioned, you've been a busy boy. Uh, you've had a bunch of uh, equipment in development, and it sounds like so, some of it, and I've, I've got to witness it and, and use some of the gear as you've kind of experimented on it and come up with different iterations. I want to definitely chat with you about um, some of those items because I think they're game changers for our our spearfishing lifestyle. And um, I also want to catch up with you and hear some more some more stories from the old man blue. <laughs> yeah, well, let, let's start, mate. There's, yeah, I don't know where to start. It's been really, really busy. It's slowly but surely I feel old man blue is getting traction. Um, yeah, I've, I've had some real warm and fuzzy feelings, especially now with the crayfishing season opening up, and there's all these people posting wonderful things about our sea sack and our loops, and I didn't ask for it. And it's just, it's I feel a bit embarrassed, but it's such a nice feeling. It's always good when third parties rated your gear without you. You know, you know, it doesn't matter, but it's a good feeling to know that people like your gear. You were telling me some dude the other day he was like. If you use anything else, you're an idiot or something. Some guy was oh, saying yeah. on social media. I wouldn't dare say that, but how wonderful. It's good if somebody <laughs> else does it. Yeah, no, that, no, he's a top bloke, Colin. Yeah. Yeah. So back back a yeah. while ago now, you and I, we did a bit of a naming thing where we named this, uh, this, this bag, this lobster and sort of seafood, like a foraging bag, I guess you'd call it. I mean, it's... Purpose purpose made for lobster, but if you if you've got abalone or sea urchin, it it'd work also really well for that. But your bag is probably I've never seen anything like it on the market. It's it's by far and away the best uh, lobster bag going. Um, if people go to um, oldmanblue.com.au, you can go and check it out. It's called the Sea Sack, but essentially Bert has designed this catch bag that is absolutely purpose made for what we do and. I don't know if you could break it. Bert's got a terrible business model. Um, he makes products that are, are near on indestructible. I mean, I, I'm sure that people have found a way to break them, Bert, but uh, tell us a little bit about the CSAC and and uh, how that product sort of come about and some of the features. Yeah, thanks, mate. Just to go one step back, you talked about unbreakable. Um, we actually took the bag up north and the boys helped me and they came up with this idea. We actually towed the boat in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I must find that video and actually put it up. So I wouldn't suggest anybody do that with a bag, please don't. But we just thought, that, you know, just to test, see what it can take. So you can actually put two ropes on both sides of the netting bag and give it a little yank with a boat. And she seems to be all right. Um, but anyway, yes, the bag came around um, just purely because of a cow bed in South Africa swimming around with a, a tire, with a net below it. It was absolutely yeah, exhausting. And I suppose I was younger, fitter, and yeah, well, not as smart, I suppose, not that I'm smart today, but I learned from this that Calbert's is killing you swimming around and a waste of energy. And then as time progressed, um, Dad designed that um, sort of little couch bag in the front, and that worked really well, but it was really bad for my lower back. It um, still pulling it through the kelp, and it worked. It definitely, definitely worked for years after that bag. Thanks, Dad, he's gone now, but it was a yeah, I'm grateful for that bag. Anyway, point of this is fast track to today. I, I had a few bags I don't want to name drop, but pretty much I have tested almost every bag that Adreno sells and all the other dive shops sell. And pretty much they all see anchors, in my opinion. Um, there's one that is okay, but the problem is um, I don't know where it get made. Today, the old ones were better. The new ones, the crayfish climb out the top. So you still lose your catch and – um, I find that they still a what I call a sea anchor because when you yeah. swim, you have a lot of drag. Yeah, and- drag's a big issue, especially mm-hmm. when you're covering all- distance. Like if you're if you're swimming, like and, and when you're going lobstering, like often you're you know doing it from shore. You might swim several kilometers. Yeah. If you've got yeah. a couple of lobster in there and you're dragging something around, 
Like we spend all this time trying to get our streamlining right and buying the right fins to yeah. to have something out the back of you that is just like having a sea anchor out there. It's yeah. it's not it's counterproductive. Yeah. So this fish here has no drag. Obviously, anything in the ocean will have a little bit of drag. It is a net, so water pass through it. Saying that when you have um, 24 lobsters in the bag, there's drag. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll be just a drag from the lobsters, and that'll be a, a nice yeah. one. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you bear that one because it's a nice feeling. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's a one-way belt that came around from me putting my hand inside a S3 cock and um, – <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing, you know, just the way it's one way of So the whole thing is engineered and designed according to nature. So push it in one way, and when you're done, in the end of the day, you come back to the boat, land, wherever you go, pull the cord, everything drops out, share your catch, and when you're done, in the end of the day, before you leave the boat, you put all your personal belongings in your bag, and when you leave a boat, you don't forget that snorkel, you don't forget that mask, and you take the goodies in your sea sack home. So Yeah, right. That's I love that about it. It's a wicked invention, uh, but do you think that a lot of innovation has been borrowed from nature in general, whether we're looking, you know, in our local spearfishing context or further abroad? Do you think that that's some of the smarter things that we've come up with? Oh, definitely, mate. Nature, you can't beat nature. They always went ahead of us. They adapted, they adapted to the situations, and they if, if we can learn from it in every single way. Um and I definitely, you know, I've learned from, you know, just the ocean and everything. They taught me so many lessons. But we base this on that. And also, it's funny how you have jobs. Once upon a time, I was a muley fisherman and we had these nets. And when you pull it around the bottom, you have a bottom net. And that net is what drags scholar fishermen would know the same thing. And that net just gets destroyed. Um, not as good for environment. I'm not going to go there. But I realized that this is a really good net. So I sourced that net. And we make the bags out of that net. I have a, a young girl called Ramsell. She's amazing. She's the one. She's got these little tiny hands and she can knock this bag together. She's much faster than me. I've got clumsy big hands. It's not so good. Um, but, yeah, no. So it, it, we, we've come a long way. And our, our gear is now in WA definitely better known. And for everyone that's got the CSEC and all the other gear, I am so grateful and yeah, I'm embarrassed sometimes to think that people buy my gear and, and love it. It's it's a nice feeling, a warm, fuzzy feeling for me. Thank you. Fantastic to hear a bit more about the CSAC and kind of the passion, the inspiration behind where it come from and kind of how it's performing. I think, like you've sort of said, I think the CSAC's doing pretty well in Western Australia. I don't know that it's got um it's it's got it's like it's received as as widely across Australia and and, and further abroad as it possibly could be. Um, it's definitely an awesome sea sack. I've used a couple of them myself now. Uh, memorably, one I used down in uh, South Australia when I was diving off uh, some rocks down there chasing lobster, and we got a few. And like you say, it sort of glides through the water. I think it's the best the best um, catch bag on the market. I just I don't think it's as widely it been a widely ad adopted as I'd like it to have been. So if people want to check that out, it's definitely up on oldmanblue.com.au. Um, yeah, lo I love it. I love that bag. And uh, as soon as you showed me and sent me one, I was like, this is a no-brainer. This is the best cray bag I've ever seen. And even when I was back in the day scuba diving, we had those awful scuba diving catch bags. Like uh, yeah. this bag gives you just a, a bit more appreciation for uh, the craft, I guess, of making and designing and thinking about how gear can be better done. So it was very cool. Um, you did a bit of commercial diving. Um, I want to hear about this bad haircut. You might have had. Oh, mate, that, that's sort of right. Now, what 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 it is is um, you talk about the dreadlocks, mate. Yeah. What happened is when we were divers on the west coast, the water is pretty cold. So, um, for anybody that's dived the west coast, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And our ships were like an hour and a half minimum to about two and a quarter an hour. If you're really tough, you could probably push it a little bit longer, but two and a quarter hours is crazy long. When you come out, you get high of a you can't get out of your own wet suit, somebody has to undress you. We had this one fella, I don't know if I should call his name. Let's not give him a name. I feel bad. He might be listening <laughs> to it. So but just, we keep it vague. Yeah. And um, anyway, so call him Jay. So Jay, basically, um, he's always got a reason why, like, you know, it comes to about an hour, 15 minutes, he goes, 
and then he has to come out and it might be because that day he's got the runs or he's got this or he's got that and he's always got a reason. He just has to come out of the water. And we're all like, you know, it's like a team of us, those four commercial divers, and we go, no, 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 Jay, you're staying and you're doing your shift and you're doing it to the very end yeah. and then you can come out, right? <laughs> There's no way you're coming out early today. And we probably pushed it. We probably would crawl and push it in the two hours, 15 minutes, I suppose, not an hour and a half only. And he came out and he can hardly speak or whatever. And the next moment, as you take his wet shirt off, and he's just quite a smaller guy and he's quite round. <laughs> and he's got, you know, the guys that's got the hair coming up the shoulders and the back and there's hair everywhere, mate. He's like a little furry creature. And as it comes out, because it's two and a half hours of shit, it's oh. found its way into all this bits of hair. You've got these little tiny dreadlocks. And the dreadlocks is hanging everywhere off his arms, off his chest. Anyway, as we do, it's like about 45 k's to the nearest town. He had to sit in the back of a ute, mate. We, we wouldn't let him in the road. We're like, no, mate, you're on the back. So anyway, this so, poor bugger, his excuse to get out of the water was 100% legit and you guys made him shit himself and stay down. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And then, and then on the west coast of South Africa, I'm guessing it was cold weather. He's had to sit on the back of the tr- of the trailer as well. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. No, he'll remember that one. He'll remember that. That's anyway, a tough it's, job. It's, it's, it's I, a I'll long tell you, time ago now. It's quite funny. How would you get the shit out of your dreadlocks? You'd be bloody like using a pressure I, washer. I, I don't know. I, he had a wife, and she was probably kind, man. Probably <laughs> gave him a bath, or soaking, you know. I don't know, high pressure hose or something. Who knows? I have no if, idea. If ever there was inspiration to shave them, that was it. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Gee, a couple was, of months ago. Um, but one of your favourite uh, sort of creations, I guess, over the last period of time, has been the orca harness, and um, I got to try it one of your early versions. And at that time, I think you probably had one or two designed to fit every body shape. And since then, you made some uh, some massive changes there. Is that is that my vest? It looks a bit like my one. Yeah, yeah. yeah seen some work. Um, talk. Tell us about first of all, like why do you want to wear a harness? What are the advantages of a harness in general? And uh, what does it mean for you personally in your diving? Mate, I just immediately when you said it, it's, I'm just going to start a, a, a young girl over here called Mel. Um, she's the first. So we've got a lot of test divers. We call them our ambassador divers. They test our gear. And um, Mel is definitely one of our ambassador divers. And she has always been a weight belt girl. So it's that step over from weight belt. And also there's small things that I didn't understand. I never knew girls' legs float. It's okay. So it was a weird concept, but anyway, I've learned that. So I've learned a few things from Mel. But the thing is, she's used her harness. She went up north and did, I think, a three or four week trip, dive trip. And when she came back, to be honest, I can't recall word for word, but she she wrote a glowing review on it, and it changed the dive style because suddenly she was more buoyant in the water. And I didn't realize that some people have a problem when you stalk fish to stay in a certain position. It's just I've never had that problem, so. So what I know. So those are things that came from a harness that I didn't even think about. Um, another friend of mine, he went um, diving with it, and he goes, I can't believe how it's changed my diving because I always used to use energy to duck dive. Yeah. Now, I've, I've never understood that it takes effort to duck dive. I, know, I can't remember when I learned it, but I suppose it becomes a natural thing. You don't use energy anymore. But... What he reckons is suddenly, because the way that it's designed, it pulls you down mm. when you're ready to go down and you use very little energy. And apparently how it works is, I mean, you know much more about freedom than I do, but that first step where you want to go down, apparently you want to clear your fins. You, you talk about it later on, but anyway. The, <laughs> the, the point of this, what I'm trying to say, is these are things that I did not think about. Mm. So those are the things that I'm like, yes, you beauty. What I did think about is, I've been lost at sea. I've been, um, you know, I've had some close call boat prop shark, you name it. And I thought, I need something that is like a little turtle shell that I can carry my gear in. I've dived in the west coast of Africa. I've dived as a kid a long time. And my lower back is gone. I cannot wear something around my waist because my lower back just doesn't want to do it anymore. I'm too old. So I thought, 
how do I work around it? So for the last 20 years, I have bought everyone's harnesses, made harnesses, a friend of mine, Sebastian, he made harnesses. So we made a lot of our own gear and came up with an okay concept. And then um, from that, that led into me thinking, hang on, there's a market for it. People, like most divers, if they don't know it, they think it doesn't work because they're not using it. But once they actually get to use something that actually benefits you in more ways than you can think, and it's 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 not bull stuff. It's not bull. It's it's the real thing. So it changed the dive style. So what I'm trying to say here is your lower back will be safe. It's safe to dive with, um, and there's so many other features in it. So I've, I've tried to create something that will change your way of diving, and hopefully. You don't know you're wearing it. So mm. what was nice, and I, yeah, I have to thank you. You were also one of our ambassador divers, I suppose, because you dived with one of our old ones. Mm. And listen, it was a good idea. I tried to design the whole harness from the beginning. And um, if you look at a girl's sports brass, they have that funny thing in there. It goes around their wings on their back, whatever that bones is on the back of your back. Mm. And it sort of shapes. And that, to me, is perfect. So I wanted to design something like that because I know that they would have spent millions and millions of dollars developing these sports bras, and that's why I came up with that triangle because I'm trying to simulate it. Mm. But what I didn't realise is it makes a turtle shell, and a turtle shell, we are humans, we're not a turtle, and it's hard to do your diving because you know you've got a turtle shell on. So then I went back to the drawing board, redesigned it, we went back out again, still didn't work. And I think this is the harness, the one we would have with now. So I'm making up version eight or seven or something stupid. There's so many versions, it's not funny. And so many people said, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And I'll listen to everyone. And we incorporate all those people's ideas into this harness. And I made it so that it's a two-part harness. Um, I'll just quickly, hopefully it's sort of. So this is the harness here. And there's two parts to it. So you've got your back part over here, yep. and that part is actually separated from the lower harness. So it means as you're in the water, it can move with your body. So it's not restrictive. So it's not like one big giant triangle that it used to be. Yep. So I'll split it there to make it more comfortable. And then you have your lower harness. Now, what's nice about the lower part that's like a weight belt that goes around the edge, and you can fill both these with weights, you have the safety feature that is built in here where you can buy one of those blow-up sausages. Yeah. And you can put it in here if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. Yeah. And what that does is it safeguards you so that you can blow it up if you're lost at sea or you, if you want to, you can open the harness in the back. Well, let's get quickly here. It's got like a pocket, yeah. and in this pocket you could put from a safety mirror, whistles, whatever you want to. In here, I've got currently a tourniquet in there. You put in what you want or you leave it open. Yeah. So. You could do it. And then, obviously, on the bottom of it is the belt itself where you can open. Um, and in here, I've got my other real harness down here, but in my harness where you put your weights in, yeah. on here I have a safety mirror, and that's um, it's another product that I've developed. It's So it's got a special hole. It's here somewhere. I'll get it in a second. And you can look through it at a boat so you don't flash in the middle of nowhere and not get seen. Um, safety whistle, and it's close, close on you, so you can just open it up, grab it, blow that whistle to get your mate's attention on the boat, etc. Mm. So all these extra features are just exactly that. They're excellent. You don't have to use it, but put the weights in, try it. It is a game changer. I love it. It's And I hate what I don't like doing is I always think if you try and sell your own gear, it's just so pompous. It sounds like, you know, yeah. you have a, Tosso, he's like, yeah, we got to listen to this guy. Um, whereas, say you did the same thing and talked about my gear, it's better. Or if Mel talks about it, or because they they've used it and yeah. they honest the top of people, so yeah. I'd rather want there. And some of like a guy, Derek, and that's a Derek from Geo Geo Taco. He's also one of my ambassador divers. Mm. That guy's cruel, mate. He yeah. some of the feedback he gave you. If you if you're soft like skin, it would have hurt, but. He's honest. Him and Ben has given so much good feedback. And if it wasn't for blokes like this, this harness wouldn't be here today. Yeah, you need you need you need the voice of sometimes when you're the person that creates something too, it's like 
you know, it's a little bit like, <laughs> you know, like people with their own baby, you know, like you're like, oh, what's, is he handsome? And you're like, yeah, he's handsome as. And then, you know, someone else looks at your baby and they're like, yeah, no, he's, he's not handsome at all. You know, but you, you always kind of love your own kids and you get a bit so, oh, so so true, so true, so which is Which is definitely why you want to sort of crowdsource feedback as part of that iteration process. I love the fact that you've done that. Bert, and I, I think yeah. it speaks highly of the, of the harness's development. Um, what we it's called the orca harness. It's a weight vest. Why is it called an orca harness? Okay, um, going back to the west, there's the dreadlock story. There, um, a couple of moons ago, when I was working there, it was what is it, late eighties, I suppose, and um, I'm working, and you got you just all you are, you're like a Basically, you're a glorified cleaning lady. So you go along with your vacuum cleaner along the bosun floor and you've got a big old stainless steel nozzle and you ding, 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 and you just suck up all this gravel. And it makes a real big racket and there's things going everywhere. And because, like, you know yourself, when you're scratching the ground, that all that snapper and things come in and have a look. It's pretty much you doing that and all these things coming and have a look. And this day I just get this sense of thought, whoa, something doesn't feel right here. I feel like I'm being watched. You know when you have that feeling, you go, this is not right. So yep. I looked up and there's this orca right there in that filthy, dirty, nasty water, cold, looking at me. <laughs> and Sarah gave me, it, it's hard to explain. I was looking into the abyss. It wasn't looking into an eye. I was looking in a lot of mean guys' eyes. But this was next level. This was scary. And I remember just freezing. I just went quiet and just held this nozzle. And to be honest with you, I was like a, a pillar just froze and um fast track many years later my wife was nice enough she drew this eye for me and she did a really good eye obviously her eye was nicer than the one i've got on the harness um because they had color in and stuff but it's just too much to screen print so we simplified it just to a black and white so the orca eye is it's i won't sell it as a shark deterrent i believe that Sharks does not like it, meaning an orca. Um, but what it does do, 100% sure, on our last trip up north, we all had it on and we, were, we had terrible weather. And it's um, diving, you know, the islands. And the whole time, that orca on is the whole time I could see the eye on the back or the white at least. And, and that's in dirty, dirty water. That was the only part of it I ever could see. So from that point alone, your body is going to love it because he can find you in that murk. So it makes you more visible for your dive buddy. It, it oh, potentially yeah. could help with shark deterrence, although you're not going to claim that. But like all of us know anecdotally that, you know, like eyes underwater are a huge thing in the underwater world. Whether you're a predator or prey, eyes mm. are like absolutely critical. Like guys that design fishing lures and stuff like that, like most of them will just throw them away unless there's an eye incorporated in it because it, it doesn't look natural unless there's an eye. No. And so, no, that's so true. Incorporating it onto the back of the vest possibly has some 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 more advantages and it's just a radical feature because it's a well, like you. like you said looking into the abyss. It's one of those yeah. crazy things no. that that uh, my that, wife did good. She, she's a clever girl. That one. She did a very good job in the design. I'm I'm, I'm proud of it. I like. Um, it. The the other thing is um about the orca eye as well is I have gone and made it as stickers as well. So what I've done is with the, uh, the harness are going to get released tomorrow night at the club meeting. So what I've done is the first 50 harnesses, I've made up two sticker eyes. Well, actually, yeah. I didn't make it up. Susie did the illustrator. She did it for me. And um, basically the two eyes go on the bottom of your fin. So when you swim along, you see that as well. So there's two more points. So you've got the eye on the back and you've got the fins. And you're just so clear in the water. It's yeah. really nice to follow somebody. So alone, that alone, I think, will be good um, for us. Cool. Freediving for Spearfishers at howtofreedive.com will help you to extend your breath hold, understand your body better, and put you in a better position when you actually get to go out spearfishing. This program is not for noobs, as this program is for people who have some diving under their belts and understand some basic spearfishing safety, but it's perfect for spearos who want a guided, easy to follow and complete program with videos, a clear process, and a set goal. 
the five minute freediver works. Get started for free and see if it's for you at howtofreedive.com. There's a tester there. Use the code NoobSpero, N O O B S P E A R O, to save some money if you do decide to purchase. Check it out at howtofreedive.com. Freediving for spearfishers, a fantastic way to prepare, especially if you've got a big trip coming up. Get to that five minute mark and it does translate to your diving at howtofreedive.com. Handmade spear guns from the USA, killshotspearguns.com, have made rugged, functional, simple spear guns utilizing the best components. Check them out at killshotspearguns.com. Save $30 on any timber spear gun. Use the code NOOB. Visit killshotspearguns.com. Oldmanblue.com.au. You can't cheat experience. You can't fake passion, and damn, Old Man Blue can make gear that will last and stand the test of time. Check it out, at Old Man Blue Dive on Instagram. I went and um, had a bit of a look at oldmanblue.com.au and just to have a look at um, the Orca Harness sort of listing. One thing I noticed, Bert, was that um, weights are not included when people buy the harnesses, but you have given a bit of a, a size breakdown on the the weights. Um, is that something you are planning on possibly adding for people as, as weights um, sort of like as a, you know, like a, you know, if, if people want the weights to come with it, is that something that you might consider adding like you did? Okay, I'll answer the question. My wife always goes, first answer the question. So the other question is, I've designed it so it fits your standard Adreno flat weights. Okay. Easy. Go down to the Adreno store, buy them. They stock our gear, so I'm really grateful to Adreno and to all the other small businesses up and down this coast that is loyal to WA Make. Without them, we wouldn't be here. Um, now, I'm going to be a bit forward. I was going to ask you after this, you know that video we made in the back yeah. here when we smelted the lead? Yeah. I was going to cut and paste it a little bit and um, put it out there for people to see what we've done. Because oh, yeah, we need you, to can do do it your, you can do it yourself. Saying that, it comes maybe with a, you know, hey, you could get cancer with your um Yeah, weight, with your lead weight. You know, because of these lead. So the smelting it, process. There is, there is a bit of a danger there. So I don't know how legal that would be. But if you want to have a go, I, I can't see why some people like myself, I like having a go. And if you, you, you're aware of a risk and you wear a mask and you try to be a bit safe, hey, have a go. Well, enough, but I think if you're right with it, mate, I would like to make a video of it. Yeah, 100%. I'll send you that footage after. We'll, we'll do that. Thanks. That was fun. I've never smelted my own lead weights before. So, um, you know, while I was staying with you, but I think I learned just so many practical hands-on things. Like this is the way you do diving. And I'm kind of, in a lot of ways, I think I've spent a lot of time doing the podcast and not a lot of attention, paying paying attention to my gear. So some <laughs> in some ways, like, you know, like you, you meet a lot of Sparrows and they might be good at, ver- at different aspects of, of spearfishing. You know, when it comes to like doing and delving into my own gear, I think sometimes that's an area of neglect for me for sure. So it was really cool to stay with you and get a bit more hands on. Oh, Enjoyed it, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, no, I, I, but I, I will, I will do a bit of a, a feature on the harness. I haven't made any harnesses, and if anybody's out there that has not knowledge on maybe to do a production for me in WA, please get back to me because I, I'm terrible at all this marketing and social media if it wasn't for Brandon I'll be I, I'm used to say it so I need all the help from you guys because I'm a fossil I'm not gonna lie about that <laughs> it's it's not my thing I don't care much for the you know, going off a point the other thing is I quickly I found this mirror in my harness just now so yeah I don't know if you could see this um yeah I can it see is, it can you see okay what it is is if I come closer it is a mirror and what the mirror does it's got a thing that you can look through so yep. when you're in the ocean, you actually flash. And I wish I had one of these. I got lost out at the brawlers. And um, I could have flashed the boat down with this. And there was more than one boat that came past me. And I swam forever. And I wish I had this at the, on a day to flash it. But anyway, I didn't. So what so, Bert's holding up is a, is a small sort of rectangular mirror that would fit in your pocket or any of the weight um, sort of pockets on his uh, weight vest. And in the middle or... Actually, there's there's five holes drilled out of it, but there's a larger hole in the middle. So basically, you can hold the mirror up and you can sight through it to make sure you're, you know, you're flashing the mirror in the correct direction of the actual, you know, vessel you're trying to flag down. So I think it's a cool yeah. idea. 
Yeah, and it holds there for somebody that goes, nah, I don't need a mirror for flesh. I'd rather use it to catch fish. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, put, put, yeah, put, yeah. Put that holes there. That's why I left the holes there because I knew some of my mates would go, so where's the holes in the corners? But Yeah. So maybe you should, the corner. Maybe you should add a fish eye to it as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I figure while you're talking about that, yeah, this one you are familiar with. Um, so this is the other mirrors. I don't know. Oh. It's, it's, it, unfortunately, the screen is like a little Christmas tree. Actually, you can hang it on a Christmas tree. Yeah. But anyway, these are our little fishes. Now, I've been diving with them for, for a very, very long time. Um, and all of these is just – there's 10 of these, and it's a it's a fad, a fish-attracting device. And then on the end, it's got a skirting like yep. that. Now, uh, a lot of people use the inside of the wine bags, etc. I'm very anti it, and I know all my friends that know me, it's I hate that. I hate seeing those silver bags in the ocean because the reality is they go through so many of those bags a year, and that bag is all in the ocean. So what I've done is I've actually put an um, Australian fabric, and I don't know if you can see, it's like a little hula hoo, like a wine dance yeah, yeah. skirt. Yep. And that has got two layers to it, so a shorty and a long one. And okay. when you wrap it, so um, you can just go down to, say, Adreno and buy, let me see, just open this. They have these, um, I think, don't quote me on it, but like I think Adreno, it, it's like a, yeah, like a drop weight thing. So yep. what I was going to do with videos, I'm just going to cut the, the bottom off, yep. and then you just hook this on and you hang the skirting around that drop weight. You just ah, put it around, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. that way you can make your own device. So you don't have to go and be engineered to do it. I thought make it as easy as humanly possible. So the you buy the actual length of um, skirting, fish attracting. Yeah, you, know, right. you buy the skirting and the, the ten flashes, and we've used it. You've used it. Yeah, um, I've had ah oh, sharks take it. I have. Um, <laughs> I had what do you call it? Those big stingray things take it. I've had cots take it, and they all spit it out after a while. But everything <laughs> has a go, and, yeah. and it's, in that way, you don't need to burly. So you hopefully don't have that same feeding frenzy that what you would do when you put burly in the water with sharks, etc. So you're not teaching them that, hopefully. I distinctly remember diving over there, Bert, and we were a popular reef off Exmouth there, diving on dusk. And Joel and I were in the water, and we were like, this is pretty hectic. Like, I think I learned a lot about sort of how risk-averse people are to sharks. And, and you know, like everyone's kind of got a level of tolerance, like I think that have been in the water for a while, and particularly in Australia, diving with sharks. I, I found that I think Joel's tolerance was somewhere around a 3 out of 10. Mine was probably somewhere around a 5 or a 6 but your tolerance definitely tapped out way, way, way up at the 10 scale. I think like you were just not phased in the least, like diving down through like four or five bull sharks to lay on the bottom. You did not care at all. Whereas I was kind of like, this is getting pretty hectic. And uh, I distinctly remember that. I, it was um, some of the ways you dive bird are just so like, they just really stand out. Like the way you um, oh, thanks, steady, steady on the throttle and it's just two speeds <laughs> a bit. Full forward, just yeah. flat strap, or just yeah, you're in neutral pretty much. And the other two speeds, yeah. and you're like, no, no, steady, steady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I love the ocean, mate. And and in the end of the day, it's I, I, I maybe I look a little bit blase, but I don't feel like I'm blase. Maybe I, people view me different. But when I go through, I I look at them, and and it's like dogs, you know. You look at dogs, a pack of dogs, and you go, "Oh no, these dogs are just, you know, you can pat them, or you go, oh, that one's going to rip me hand off." <laughs> so it's, I suppose oh, it's just, I've got this thing about them. It's, yeah. Anyway, that's there's no real theory behind it, mate. I love love the ocean. So just quickly back to those flashes you've designed. Um, the skirting is far more uh, environmentally friendly, as you've sort of identified than the goon bags style flashes and they yeah, the, the skirting seems to be just as good at picking up light and drawing in sort of your you know you know all of your species like your pelagic species that are drawn yeah. to to flashes it seems to do exactly the same job well 100 percent, if not better 
Um, yeah. I reckon better. I get more things because it's more natural. Yeah. Um, it's 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 it's. I think because it's white. Mm. Um, it looks like a, maybe a dead fish, or it looks like a wood or something mid water. Yeah. I don't know. It's things just come in and they investigate it. It's like I said. I've had this thing so many times that you just think, "There goes my flash," and then. After a while, the thing just spits it out and go, yeah, that's disappointed. But it, it does its trick. And we've used it for blue water hunting. Like, you know, my Mikko Mani is a very, very good blue water hunter. We've used it. You have big tuna coming on it. Um, and then I've had little things, you know, like just those like little red, um, rassy looking fish, you know, whatever they call rassy fish. I don't know, like the little red things that you get everywhere. You know, in the shallows, and they just come in. So it, it does what it's supposed to do. And I feel um, if you're not a very good spearer, I don't think sometimes, you know, I look at some of these guys and go, oh, moly, you know, you go down 45 metres and you hold your breath for two minutes and fall asleep down and you bring up whatever. It's like not everyone is like that. I'm not like that. So I need a bit of help. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Mecca and Antoine. Like, um, I got to meet Mecca while I was at your place, and he's a just a top man. They, you know, he's kind of designed his lifestyle around spearfishing up in his. I don't know if he'd be happy me telling him. Yeah, probably not, mate. But, um, <laughs> but like, it, what, what a legend! He loves his spear and that dude, and he's a really cool, very confident guy. I love it. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So, is that flasher up available also at oldmanblue.com.au? Um, you know what? This weekend, um, Brandon goes, hey, Bert, how about putting – give me images. Uh, hey, Bert, <laughs> how about putting it on? Okay. Hey, Bert. Um, <laughs> hence, it's me. It's not him. Okay. It's, um, it's, I, I have got it. I just have to put it on. It's, right. it's, it's, uh, what happened, my problem is I always die for gear with my friends for at least three, four, five, whatever years it takes till I feel that – Everyone that I've dealt with is okay with it. No, you're never going to please everyone. It's impossible. But if I get 95% of their – and the mates that I – like I said, you know, some of them are pretty cool, the comments. So if they're all happy, then I'm happy to release it to everyone else because I'm not willing because everything we make here in WA, and I'm very, very passionate, and my heart is on my seat. I'm just a normal bloke. You go down to my shed. I've got a normal shed. It's dirty like everybody else's shed. It's a mess. I work in there. I give it my everything, making gear that will last for you guys, the divers out there. So it's done with passion. And everybody goes off offshore and they make these things, mass produce it, and everybody goes, oh, I can make that cheap. I can make it faster. I can do this. But it changed the dynamics of the product. It doesn't. Mm. It's not as good. Um, and all I want to do is make good gear that people would love. Well, you're doing well so far, Bert. You've, um, you know, the harness has come along. We've, we, we talked about the flasher, and we, we've also gone back over the, the catch bag as well, the C sack. Like these things are, you know, you can tell there's been years of thought and development in these things, and I, I think a lot of it's coming to fruition. So, um, I want to get back into a couple of stories off I can, but you've. Uh, you mentioned uh, a, a giant triggerfish eating an Englishman. I, I want to uh, hear a bit more about this. Oh, uh, mate, I'm going to give him his name. His name is Andrew. Anyway, so my wife and myself, we're young and, you know, I think we, were we married yet? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we had a ma- marriage in Malaysia. So I think it's that three or four weeks. It's a cool-off period where they put your photos on a board to see if you've done anything dodgy and then you can't get married. So we were. In that three weeks, we went off to this island. Now, I've gone blank on the name. It doesn't matter. But this island is sort of on the east side of Malaysia, on sort of on the Thai border, off there somewhere. Anyway, so off to this island, and um, most beautiful spot. Anyway, so we meet this guy called Andrew, and he's got, you know, those guys, they sound like the queen. So, <laughs> and it's just like, you know, a little white kid, you know, and he's just, he, it's not much happened in his life before. And I thought, oh, look at this guy, right? And um, and everything is telling all these stories, but I thought, no, we need to give him some excitement. And I <laughs> dived out and I was this big old brain coral. And just behind this big old brain coral is this biggest trigger fish. And it's angry. I mean, I mean, this thing has got it in for me. And I back on, you know, on the mask. And go, oh, you beauty, Andrew, here we go. <laughs> and so I thought, 
make a Yui, go straight out to the beach again, get out, take all my gear off. Go, hey, Andrew, I oh, see that brain cross. Beautiful, mate. Just go around the back of it. It's just fish everywhere. <laughs> and um, so we said, I'll say to my wife and a friend, I go, have a look at this. You know, this guy's going to walk on water soon. <laughs> and you see him going around the, on the, on the, um, the brain. I said, I oh, know it's a bit evil, but it's, it's a bit of fun in there. And um, so he goes over brain call. And next time, you just see like white washes, like a shark attack, you know. It's just <laughs> amazing to watch. It's just like, <gasps> like a feeding frenzy. And the next moment, you know, when somebody really kicks hard, but they go, no way. You still have the brain coral five minutes later, just like this white wash. And then she comes out and it was just amazing in the Queen's English, you know, he gave us a rundown of the experience, but at least he got a story for the rest of his life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at you helping beige English women, Englishmen uh, get more colour in their lives. That's excellent. Yeah, a little bit of excitement, you know. Why not? Uh, holiday. Are you in the market for a new spear gun? Killshot Spear Guns has got blue water wahoo tuna guns, open track spear guns, enclosed track spear guns, rear handle enclosed tracks. Check them out at killshotspearguns.com. Even better, I've got some good news for you. You can save $30 on any Killshot Spear Gun at killshotspearguns.com. Use the code NOOB. If you're in store, just say, Crikey, mate, or say Shrek from the Noob Spiro sent you, and you'll save $30. Ed Martin at killshotspearguns.com. Check him out. Hey, buddy. How's your breath hold going? Really? You struggling? I do too sometimes. And that's why I've got something perfect for you today. I think you'll agree with me when I say that maintaining or even increasing your breath hold is a struggle, especially when you're not slaying fish every week. But what if I told you there was a way to train yourself easily and do it safely? Freediving for spearfishers at howtofreedive.com will help you to extend your breath hold, understand your body better, and put you in a better position when you actually get to go out spearfishing. This program, Freediving for Spearfishers, is not for noobs. Uh, it's for people who have some diving under their belts and understand basic spearfishing safety. But it's perfect for spearos who want a guided, easy to follow and complete program with videos, a clear process and a set goal. The goal is a five minute static. And check it out, freediving for spearfishers at howtofreedive.com. You can get started for free, do the taster. And if you do decide to purchase, use the code NOOBSPEARO, N-O-O-B-S-P-E-A-R-O to save some money if you do decide to purchase. Check it out at howtofreedive.com. Hey, Nooba, get your froth on with some Noob Spiro gear. The Jobfish Tribute, Spiro Dad, Rancid Pelican. This gear is only available at noobspiro.com. From flip-flops, Crocs and socks, through to hats, shirts and stickers, get your froth on with Noob Spiro at noobspiro.com. We talked about steady, steady uh, in the old boat there, Bert. Um, tell me about running out of fuel. Was this a recent adventure? Mate, I'm not proud of it. So I can remember at least two or three times. I'm sure my mate's going, they're going to say, hey, Bert, maybe a bit more. But anyway, <laughs> I, I have, and it, now I'm better. I've got a four stroke, but when I had an old two stroke, this thing was just like a guzzler. And um, so we had a Sharks Bay, and um, on this trip was a big exploring trip. So we've got new ground. And I know roughly I can do maybe 100 kilometers, give or take 110. And we now at at least 100 kilometers, and there's no land in sight yet. I'm thinking, boys, because, geez, Bert, you're going so slow today. I'm like, no, nah, it's a nice day, you know. We're just steady, steady. We'll get home. And as we're getting close to Shark Bay, so a place called Denham Bay, we get out, and there's the sea fishery officers. And they're standing, and you can see them right where you pull the boat in, and they stand. And as we get into the channel, which is oh, maybe two, three hundred meters out to sea, the boat just got <laughs> a dead. So we coast in, right? I just lift the engine up, let, you know, momentum carries that a little bit further, and I run straight onto the bank plane. <laughs> so we can walk off. So now we're on this sort of low ground because I cut like a trench out to get you through this bank thing. So we're walking out the boat, and you see these chiefs and officers go, geez, you know, they can't look this serious for this long, you know. So now they're walking up and down, sort of killing a bit of time. And eventually we got out and um, I don't know if it's Andrea or who said it at the time. It doesn't matter. It goes, 
nah, we're all eco-friendly. We don't like wasting fuel. We pull the boat in. So it was, <laughs> it was just one of those magical moments, you know, like, and they had a chuckle. We had a chuckle. Was, I mean, we had our fish limit, so we weren't worried. But, um, yeah, it was just a nice trip. But running out of, at sea out of fuel, mate, yes, I've been guilty of that. It's not a good thing. <laughs> You don't leave anything in reserve, do you? But no, it's just yeah. That's the way. Oh, I don't know what to say. That's the way you live life, too. I think. And uh, yeah. there's nothing left in the tank. That's good, um, mate. Another thing I have recently started using of yours, uh, and only recently, is a float line. Um, but I see Mecca. You mentioned him before, and, mm. and uh, maybe is is Antoine using it as well? Yeah, um, it pretty much um, what happened, Mika is definitely one that was my ambassador dive over there on the island. And they do a lot of free diving for doggies and um, what's that silverfish called again? Wahoo. And um, so what happened is, and also yellowfin tuna, and, and some of these creatures, they kill the rope. So what happened is um, there's quite a few very, very good float lines out there, but I just saw a niche in the market. And I looked at it because a lot of them drag. They have a dipping thing. And also, like your PVC ones, absolutely useless. You know, they're good if you have no coral reef around. Yeah. They won't get cut. And I, I, I suppose that floats and they work well. But as soon as they get a nick in them, they're useless. So what happened is I sourced an Australian rope. It's made right here. So it's a really high-end UV-stable rope. And um, it's just one right here. Yeah. And now the boys all on the island, there's not many of them diving there. Maybe I'm making up about eight or nine of them, give or take, maybe a bit more. And pretty much all of them are using my float line. So to me, it's an honour, and I don't want to knock other people. They used to dive with international brand names, and now everyone is using my one. So what, what makes our float line, I suppose, unique is firstly the fact that it floats, which is a big help. Um, and it comes with this braking system. So I used to work a bit as a tree lobber. And when you start to explain, when you walk along branches, it's hard to explain, but you, you use a prosthetic and you actually move along. So you can keep your weight and your balance. I can't explain it, but basically it's a very simple thing. It's like a little lanyard that you make up. And um, I've, I've used this. I'm just going to show you. So it's like a piece of um, rope here. So yep. you can pull a, a boat out of that rope, by the way, and that rope just, if you hold your fingers on the side, you can slide this up and down. So this is attached to your float. So okay. as your fish run, instead of trying to pull, you know, you use your brake yep. and it's easy. So there's nothing that can go wrong with it. Unlike some of these, you need an engineering degree to use their brake systems because it's that technical. Yeah. This is simple. It's, it, it, I don't want to say idiot can use it. I, but I always think make things as simple as possible. The more simple it is, the less can go wrong. And this is attached. So as the fish run, it will just yank back and it stops at a car. And then it can run again and you just push it forward. And then it just yanks again. Ah, so yeah, yeah. It's simple. It's, 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 listen, it, I'm an inventor. This, I've used this when I did tree walking. So all the arborists out there will go, hey, bird. You didn't come up with it. We've used it forever. Yes, you have. That's where it comes from. So a lot of our gear are based on aspects of my life. It was a merely fisherman, commercial diver, walking around on trees and cutting trees down, whatever. Yeah. You learn as you go along from a lot of blogs. And all I've done is to take all this knowledge and I share it into our products. And then obviously we have really, really heavy duty um, shark clips, tuna clips on it. Um, they're just crazy. It, it, personally, I think it's overkill, but I rather overkill and it's got stainless steel. It's all free, 16 stainless steel. I give it with our float lines. You don't have to use it. I prefer diving without them and just wiring direct into it, one less thing to go wrong. But if you traditionally use them and you want the best, this is the best attached to it. But you could just use it and pick it onto another part of your dive gear and use it elsewhere mm. so it comes with that and it also has a lanyard so for instance with Mick and the boys sometimes they have to carry their fish of it so I made it so that you can put your hand over here so you tie your fish to you and then it, your rope and your fish is on the same and you can carry it over your shoulder Ah, yep, yep, so, yep. and then also in the centre of it 
it comes with its own little lanyard or keeping that it nice just keeps it all together cool. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I like it. It's just it's pretty simple, um, but a lot of thought has gone into it, and it 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 was a progression thing. A lot of feedback, especially from Mika. He him and Antoine probably gave me the most of my feedback through it, and. Um, the last one that I'm sort of really excited about and happy is that a friend of mine, two friends of mine, actually went, Sebastian and Dwayne, they went over to Panama uh, to the islands and they dived with some amazing guys over there. It sounds wonderful. It's just an amazing spot. But one of the locals is a commercial spear fisherman. And um, when Sebastian left, he gave this fellow my rope, or oh. his rope, but my rope that I made, and I'm so proud of it. It's it's it's, it's you know, unfortunately, most type of people, you know, they live such a basic existence. They don't have social media, so yeah, I can't yeah. communicate with this fellow, but I would love to know what he gets on it. So I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. I'll have to go and have a look. We'll have to do a trip there to go and have a look. I'd love to get over there. Jeepers, it's a beautiful part of the world. I've been watching a few videos around lately, like um, Ollie Craig. I, I know you don't watch a lot of YouTube. Um, but, no, I don't, mate. He did a he did a, um, a Fiji couple of videos and then a couple in the Solomon Islands, and I'm just like – I got to make some time to get out and see some of the Pacific Islands. Just like they're so they're so such amazing locations. Like the the cultures are distinct. The water is crazy and beautiful, and there's just so much access to like big fish. Uh, it, it looks pretty cool. With um with this with your float line, Bert, um, and like Mick is chasing um dog tooth up there. Um, what what does his setup look like? Do you know? Like what? What's yeah. he? What's so he using? Basically, they deal with it. I think two or three atmospheric float. Just a very basic one. Um, uh, not the most expensive, not the cheapest, but they're very particular about it. And what I've learned from the boys over there is, on his boat, you're only allowed to use the same floats, a similar float, because um, I have to with him, and I brought my own float. And being a different float, that stuffed up the hole because when floats. Is on a water, they have to be same and then they behave the same. So, float line the same, it's your life depending on it. So, yeah, keep yeah. gear all similar and it works. So, good float, and then they depending on so they dive with a bungee, so with okay. a, a spectra cord inside it to give you that stretch, obviously, float line, and then a breakaway rig. So, you're obviously, after you shoot the fish, you keep your spear gun and it runs to the float. So, then you chase your float if it goes down. And grab a float, and then you do the brake system and bring the fish up the up. And if you've got a good mate, he can swim down and shoot it again if necessary. So it's that's their rig, and that's what I'm saying is um, with that. What was nice is the first trip I did over there it was a cluster because three different rows, floats different. What a bloody mess! It's if it was my boat, I think I'll be honest and say, listen, guys, one float in the water, we spear fish with one gun. This is just going to kill someone. It's yeah. just too dangerous. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is how do you learn all these things? You know, it's, it's it takes time and a lot of time you do these trips and you don't think of it. You don't go, oh, what's your mate taking? Yeah, check what he's doing because you're going to be equal in the water and if the floats float next to each other, the float lights be able to say there is no real danger. But if you have all these different loops and things going around, that's it. You spend half an hour to 45 minutes after you shoot a fish yeah. to make up a mess, to clean it up. And you've just wasted how much is that trip costing you? Thousands of dollars. Yeah. And you're sitting on a boat doing a crow's nest. It's just being silly, you know. It's like it makes no sense. But somehow people don't share this knowledge, I think, because they embarrass it because they stuff up all the time. But I'm good at stuff up, but I do learn from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the main thing too. And obviously, like, if you, if you see some opportunities for better gear, like your float line's kind of – um, you know, definitely fulfilling a bit of a need there. And uh, it's tough. It's Australian made. It's floating and uh, you've got it all rigged up. So it's kind of purpose made. Um, and there's not there's not a lot else people would have to do to it other than maybe take yeah. take one or two items off if, it, if that's their preference. So, I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty handy. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And it's made with a lot of love and it, 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 it's, 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 it's made for the purpose by us and, you know, I know how valuable it is to go on a trip. And also sometimes what I try to like for about CSEC, say for instance, hypothetically, you put a bag of oranges in there and you just cut it open to get one of the oranges. Now you've got a, a whole big hole in your 
bag. You can fix that net. So I made it so that on those trips, you get some string from somewhere else or some fishing line. You can fix it on the spot and you can keep diving. And I try to always think of my gear like that is, yes, this rate, but the thing still works because it's made in such a way that hopefully I thought of the, you know, to fix the problem as I go along. Whereas yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know, you have a bag and suddenly the bag is a bit old and then you lose all the gear and you know, trip this nasty because you've still got three days of diving left and you can't, you know, that sort of. So making it year by ourselves, we make, like same for example, the harnesses, everything is double and triple stitch. And I did it for a reason because I don't have a lot of money. I've got a basic job, basic wage. And when you spend money, I don't understand how people can, you know, like they buy something and two years down the track, they buy another bag and another bag and another bag. And I'm thinking, I know you for 10 years and you had five or six bags or just, whatever. Just but, buy one, you know, good one. Yeah, just, just, and, and, and the thing is, our one is by far not the most expensive. It's much more expensive than ours, but obviously it's a more reputable brand, but it's made in Asia and it's cheaper, but the yeah, profit margins are better. Um, but anyway, that's another story for another day. <laughs> Yep. Um, yeah, definitely. Like I think you can't you can get frustrated with the offshoring of a lot of stuff, you know. But sometimes if 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 products are going offshore, it's often inferior quality, even if they do have good quality quality management and stuff. It's kind of that um, ethical dilemma, isn't it? But like yeah. you know, you've stuck to your guns though. Tried to keep. I think you've tried to keep everything Australian made, and um, yeah. and it will it's pay hard. off. It'll pay off with a reputation long term for sure. Oh, yeah. I meant to be, to be on this today. I was meant to work. And my sewing machine that's for the harnesses, it wouldn't, the bobbin wouldn't work. I'm no sewing machine mechanic, but it took me a full nine hours in front of a sewing machine to get it to work again. That's nine hours of my day gone. But you learn. Now, next time a problem comes up, I know how to fix it. But it, it, this is small business. So, you, you don't tell people about these things. It's just part of cost of doing business. But I'm passionate about it and I do want to succeed. But without, you know, the Mikas and the Sebastians and all these people supporting my grant when it was just nothing, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be able to look at all these possibilities and believe that one day I might have a chance. You know, I'm going to give, I am going to give it a good go. I don't want to give up. Yeah, love it. Great news, guys. Adam Stern has made his freedivingfamily.com courses available at a discount for the new Spiro community. If you get on freedivingfamily.com, use the code Spiro, you'll get 20% off any course. There's a bunch of sick courses on there. There's an equalizing uh, stage one. There's an equalizing advanced techniques um, video there. They're two of my absolute favorites. If you have any problems with equalizing, go to freedivingfamily.com. Get Adam's course and use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course. Check it out at freedivingfamily.com. Sometimes with weather and commitments, it's a long time between drinks in your spearfishing journey. If you want a dry training program that can keep you in some kind of shape for spearfishing, check out Ted Hardy's 28-day freediving transformation at noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. That's noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. Now, the 28-day freediving transformation is just a practical dry training plan that Ted Hardy will walk you through, and it will help you get results even if you can't get wet at the moment. Check it out at noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. This podcast is brought to you by aqualite.com.au. This is the best solution bar none for staying hydrated in the ocean. If you're a Spiro, it's an absolute no-brainer. It's a game changer. If you're doing extended trips and the cramp starts to set in and uh, the old body's telling you, hey, that's enough, just get hydrated and it will save you a whole heap of woe. Get Aqualite at aqualite.com.au. It's scientific rehydration that Spiro's know and trust. I know because one works there, and that's why we've set up this discount code for you. 10% off when you use the code NoobSpiro at aqualite.com.au. Check it out. Australian-made hydration products tailored for Spiro's and a whole bunch of other people that suffer from dehydration too. But check it out at aqualite.com.au. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 10%. I want to hear about this Australian record story. What's, what's... Oh, 
Right, where's that now? So anyway, oh, I did put it. I mean, to, oh, yeah, I was meaning to have it close to me. But anyway, long story short, this is a good one. I can't remember which year it was. A friend of mine, Sean, the two of us go out, and what a beautiful day. One of those perfect flat days, just went out, tiny little boat. And um, anyway, jump overboard. And I look at this queenie, and I thought, Phew. look at the size of this thing. It's like a pencil fin on its back. I thought, yeah. Big boy, and it disappears. And I thought, oh, look around. You know what? That, that panic feel, like you go, where's my mate? Where's my mate? Where's my mate? I still need to breathe up. You know, it's um, there's there's the benefits of diving by yourself, my boy. So it's like, <laughs> 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 over there, doors are very. The point of this is, luckily, Sean is off here somewhere, and um, track it down, put a spear into it, and. Go back to the boat. Even Sean said, oh, that's a big fish. Now, long story short, something happened to the record. And then about six months ago, after, I don't know how long I've had that record, he sent me a piece of paper out. So now I've got the official record. I'm very, very happy about it. And things been oh, the, you got the, the Queenfish uh, WA record. Yes. No, no. Australia record. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. But anyway, that's another story for another day. But the point is not about that. The point is, so I've got this fish I'm young and I'm proud of it. You know that, that, that fuzzy, warm, fuzzy feeling and, yeah. you know, you want to show it to your mum sort of thing. Anyway, off I go and um, to the butcher shop. So I know the local butcher. So I said, hey, mate, do you mind if I use your butcher scales? Because apparently those need to be certified. And those days they weren't certified scales everywhere. So he goes, no, yeah, no worry, but go for it. I'll pull my wing out, put it down and take some photos of it and all that. This guy comes in. Yeah, queenie. Yeah, yeah, mate. He goes, yeah. Yeah, medium size, isn't it? I go, oh, I don't know. It looks pretty big to me. He goes, no, I catch these all the time. Go out to the reef every three, four weeks, I land one of those. Anyway, so point of this all is, it's now, I don't know how many years later, I would love, I don't care about the fish that much, I would love to meet this guy yeah. because it's a lifetime later. It was a bloody big feast. But what I'm saying is all these people full of bullshit and they, they can like, affect your mood, you know. So I put myself, and, and the thing is, I've been looking for a bigger one ever since because this guy tells me every four weeks you get one. <laughs> oh, I like what yeah. he did there to you. He, he, he put that seed of doubt in your mind. Uh, yeah, I'm still looking for a bigger one, mate. But anyway, it'll come. It reminds me yeah. of the three-metre flatty guy. Like, I don't know if you've seen that. The dude no. down the tweed. Oh, what's his name? I'll remember in a minute. Anyway, he, he he's he's telling these random people there like, oh, you caught any flatties? And then all people were asking him what he's caught. And he's, yeah, yeah, a couple of three metres around. And they're like, three metres? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, flatties, bloody flatties, you know. like, And they're like, that ain't grown to three metres. And he's like, maybe not where you're from, you know, like. And he, he he has these people kind of doubting themselves, like you know. But oh, brilliant! Yeah, uh, some people are precious, mate. They, they we need them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten his name off the top of my head. Anyway, he's pretty well known. Um. Anyway, um. Cool. What about uh? Oh, actually, another thing lately I've been using of yours, Bert, and uh, recently on courses too is the uh. Actually, and I even used it at a sausage sizzle the other day at Adreno. Um, they had the garage sale. Mm. No, no, the apron. Oh, your apron. I'm You've got a bit of story again. Bear me. Go on. <laughs> I forgot about the lube. Where is the lube, Joel? No, it's the um, your apron. It's got a cool design on the front. Uh, it does everything yeah. aprons want to do. But like, if you're filleting up fish, um, it's the best thing you can do. Particularly if you have an esky full of fish. It's uh, I'm not gonna hold it up. Heavy duty. Really nice to use, and you don't get fish slime all over yourself. It's kind of, oh, and it's, you can't really see it. And but anyway, it's just a, a heavy duty vinyl that we bought. And um, Monica, a friend of mine, she actually helped me um, with the design process. So what she said is, um, she found the harnesses and body sizes um, that one harness won't fit everyone because of the the shape and sizes. So she showed me a way of rigging up these that they do in Switzerland. And it's ingenious. So I've actually, about a week ago, changed all the harnesses to the Swiss way of, I don't know the Swiss way, but that's where she's from. Um, and it goes from the top, crisscross over to the back. And you can then adjust 
not only the front of a harness, you can bring it right below your chin. So if you do really messy fishing, you could have it and, and cover all your clothing that way, or you can drop it really low. Yeah, and wow. you can, and it's really, it's actually like, yeah, Swiss is pretty clever people. So I've, I've embraced what she said and um, changed the harness according to that. But it's a heavy duty harness. I've had a white harness like that. But my mate Sean, the same guy that. Um, Sorry, you're that, calling it a harness. You mean uh, a apron? Oh, not a harness. Well, just me with, you know, me with the words, mate. I've told you. <laughs> what do they call those things again? Apron, apron. Apron, yeah. Sorry, mate. The apron. Yeah, you're right. Names, you had mate. me confused there. I was like, he's gone from the apron to the harness again. Yeah, well, I'm lucky my wife is not here. I was have got the daggers again. But anyway, <laughs> the point of this is um, the vinyl, heavy-duty vinyl. I've had one that Sean bought me. He bought me a butcher apron or well, maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, and that lasted me forever. And on a trip that we went, I forgot it at one of the places we were. And I drove off and sort of broke my heart because I was sentimental about that one. But anyway, so... Hence the booth of the old man blue aprons. So I need an apron, so here we go. Well, when I, I sell knife packs and, like, you know, I've got really nice knives and nice steel, bone tweezers and, uh, you know, everything's kind of there with a the scaler and it comes in this nice five-pocket thing, as you know. And I, I like my knife pack. There's two items I would add to it. Um, one would be the apron, and I think those aprons you've got are just excellent. And the other thing I'm thinking about adding is a mesh glove. Um, cause yeah, some people need it, eh? especially with those slimy cots and, 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 and all those species that have that slime on them. Yeah. Those gloves are wonderful. Yeah, it gives you grip and, you know, if yeah. you do stick your knife in at the wrong place at the wrong time, like, you've got you've got a level of protection there. And, no, uh, you're, you're, you're 100% right on that one, Isaac. It's a, it's, it's a good good thing to have, definitely. And especially if you haven't got a lot of experience, it, it, it it's just a safe. It gives you, I think, a peace of mind. Well, the other thing too, like you, when you're doing, you know, you're coming back from a big reef trip, you might have a couple of eskies full of fish. Like oh, yeah. you're going to be standing there for a bit filleting fish. Like that is the time to have an apron on. That is the time to have a, a mesh glove on because you, mm-hmm. you, you're you going to be doing an hour or two's work and you want to do a good job and not hurt yourself and not get covered mm-hmm. in slime and shit. Uh, no, yeah, don't smell like a fish afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stinky fish. Yeah. But yeah, ah. Ah, awesome. Um, Let's get into one last story, but I want to I want to know about um, maybe a birthday flash in Fiji. Oh, that's a good story, mate. That one, not good story, it's my story, but it's it's one of my favourites. So my mate Toby, he lives close to those mob in um, Mexico that does that diving. What have they named? Bella Ventana or something they call. Oh, Palapas like Ventana. That. Yep. Yeah, he's very close. He's just around the corner. He's a school teacher over there. Okay. But anyway, we grew up, and um, he went married a Mexican girl. I married an Australian girl. Sorry, anyway, two African boys in up different places. But when he came and visited me out here, he bought me this fancy now. I think it might be a Rod Allen flash. It's one of those spiral ones, you know, the, the spiral one. The yeah, yeah. The spiral. Anyway. And like a yellow chicken. Remember the yellow chickens? That yeah, used to yeah, come yeah. With? So yeah. You to see them. And I was, oh, man, I love this thing. It's beautiful. So I thought, oh, don't can I use it out here, you know, perfect. And I'll save for a good trip. So I um, spent quite a bit of time in Fiji. So off we go to Fiji on one of the trips. And I know a couple of Fiji. And so end up like right on the northern tip of Fiji in the middle of nowhere. And um, guy that I'm diving with um, that's taking us around, he's also a fisherman. And he, he throws his rod. On the reef, we often it's like a drop of, but it's I reckon it's a kilometer deep right on the end of the reef. It just goes into the summer, summer straight or whatever that straight is called, deep there. And um, the point of this is, he hits the GT, and as he hits the GT, he goes, "Oh, by the way, I've just got this brand new birthday flasher. Just put it in the drink, and it's not, you know, when it's unwrapped, but only the the flasher part, the the." The cord itself is still wind up, so it's what we're hanging a metre and a half, three metres below the float is unwrapped, but the rest is still brand new. Yeah. And um, he goes, shoot the fish, shoot the fish, it's going to go on the reef. So now I'm like swimming like a madman around the boat, you know, and um, this GT comes rushing. I've got shoot. Right. Done the GT, throw my gun up, and um, get the spear, throw my gun back, you know. Maybe something comes in. So I swim back to my um, flash on the opposite side of the boat in the big blue. And, you know, when you start doing, oh, I'll bring one out to you. This is my personal 
one. This is still a prototype. This is a demo model. So please look at this. Um, um, this is still in development. But you know when you unwind this part? So I'm unwinding that part around it so that the flash just starts dropping. And the next moment, I look between my legs and I just shit myself. I just see this monster, monster blue, I mean, not blue, what do they call again? Bullshit. Bullshit. And this bullshit just comes up straight up at me. And, you know, when you, you're in a point where you just go, I'm stuffed. I can't do anything. I can't swim backwards. It's too late. And I just open my legs as wide as I can. And I'm thinking, here goes my nuts. And this thing just comes straight up, takes the whole float, this Rob Allen float, into its mouth, <laughs> make this flash in front of me, smack me, and then turns right in front of me. So this whole shark is in my personal space and dives down into the abyss. And all I see is this little yellow chicken out of the side of its mouth <laughs> as it goes into the abyss. I never got to use my birthday flashes. So somewhere out there in Fiji, I think mean, the chicken would be safe. I don't know what happened to the flash. Or the flash is probably uh, something. Yeah. Anyway, that's a long time ago now. Good, good, good time it was. Got a sweet deal for you today, guys. Go to freedivingfamily.com and learn from Adam Stern and a select team of experts on different disciplines. There's Frenzel, Advanced Frenzel, and Hands-Free Equalization, Mouthful, Deep Frenzel Equalization, Bifinning Essentials. These are courses that will give you the 1% that will allow you to improve. Use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course at freedivingfamily.com. Again, that's the code SPIRO to get 20% off at freedivingfamily.com. Thanks, Adam and team. Love it. Imagine on your last spear fishing trip, your best mate never comes up from his last dive and dies from a blackout. Picture having to tell their family, spouse, and kids that their loved one died on your watch and knowing their death could have been prevented simply by being near them when they surfaced. Unfortunately, I've had many people reach out to me over the years and share exactly what that was like. I can't imagine anything worse than this. If you want to make sure this doesn't happen to you, simply commit to diving safer. My name is Ted Hardy, and I'm the founder of Immersion Freediving, and I want to do more to stop the needless fatalities from blackout than any other person on the planet. And that's why I created freedivingsafety.com. If you want to learn how to reduce your risk of having a blackout, how to save your buddy's life, sign up for my free course at freedivingsafety.com. It is not a substitute for an in-person course, but it's free, comes from a trusted and reliable source, and you can start learning immediately. One month after launching this course, a Spiro called me and said he saved his buddy's life just from going through the course. His buddy blacked out underwater. He was able to recognize the signs immediately and was able to save his life. Jeremy Gamble, founder of Spiro Magazine, said since he started hunting in cooperative teams, they put way more fish in the cooler than they ever did competing against each other. Dive safe out there. It's not even that hard, especially when you can learn for free at freedivingsafety.com. Great, well, mate. It's always good to catch up. Um... I have enjoyed picking your brain a bit more and finding out a bit about what the latest sort of stuff, you know, around Old Man Blue is uh, in terms of the gear you've got going on at the moment. It's been cool hearing a bit about the development cycle and the the problems that some of these items solve. And and um, like you say, you're only making tough gear uh, to, to last. And uh, I'd encourage anyone to go and check it out, oldmanblue.com.au. But, Bert, it's always a good chance just to catch up with you, brother. I might vice versa. It is nice. And thank you for the opportunity, mate. It's 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 nice to talk about something. I feel I hope I didn't bore people too much with my gear today, but I feel passionate about it. And I need I need people to just have a go. Even if you just look at it, I'll be grateful. Um just small my guys like us, you're losing battle against these big boys. It's just you can't do it. So yeah. You know, if somebody want to have a look, just have a look or, you know, see somebody that dive with and, and ask them a question about a gear because I believe in my gear. I do. Yeah. Guys, while we're there, um, if you would like to, I would love to hear about your experiences with any of uh, Bert's gear at oldmanblue.com.au. Go to noobspero.com, head up into the menu and leave me a voice message if you can up in the Nooba story section. Um, I'm going to send out a free T-shirt for the best story about uh, an oh, item sweet. of of Bert's gear, so I'll send you out a Jobfish Lungs shirt, uh, free shipping, everything to your neck of the woods. Tell me about uh, one bit of Bert's gear, an old man blue bit of gear you're using, 
and uh, why why it's changed the game for you. So do that, noobspero.com. Head up to Nooba Stories. Leave me a voice message. That'd be cool. Otherwise, guys, check out Old Man Blue on Instagram. Um, Bert's always sharing rad stuff from the community. Uh, it's not all WA focused, but uh, the, their part of the world is absolutely beautiful and special and amazing. There is a focus around that. If you're curious about what WA has to offer, uh, the Old Man Blue Instagram page definitely has a lot of that. And uh, you can see some of Bert's gear in use there as well. So check that out. Bert, my friend, um, great to chat again, brother. Mate, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And you have a good one, mate. Oh, good. See you, Bert. Thanks, mate. Hey, legends. Uh, always good catching up with my mate, Bert. Uh, he makes some absolutely rock solid gear. So I hope you enjoyed today's discussion, geeking out on some different parts of gear. If you want to check any of it out, as usual, go to oldmanblue.com.au and uh, get into it. I'm not sure where we're off to for the next episode. I've got a whole bunch of legends teed up. It's just a matter of who I can get on the line with and uh, and get into it. But Christmas is coming up. So if you want some merch for Christmas, go to noobspirit.com and get yourself on, get your hands on some of it and uh, come back. Continue to listen to the Noob Spirit podcast. And thanks, guys, so much for your reviews and telling your mates about the show. It makes a huge difference. All good. Catch you guys. Dive safe. Adreno stocks equipment for noobers. The gear you need for all things freediving and spearfishing. The Adreno spearfishing team froth on helping customers learn about the latest in spearfishing equipment, local diving, upcoming trips and events for spearos of all levels of experience. There's no ego in there. You're going to meet cool people that love this spearing lifestyle as much as you do. Visit them in store in one of their huge mega stores around Australia. Chat to one of their friendly team members. Take advantage of the Noob Spiro discount code. Save $20 on every purchase over $200 in store, online, easy savings. Pump in the code Noob Spiro if you're shopping online or in store. Mention it's one of their friendly team members and save $20 over $200. That's right, use the code Noob Spiro in store. Shop with Adreno, our partner for more than $200 episodes buying gear online can be tricky you ask yourself the same questions will it arrive on time is it actually what i want how much is a shipping going to cost great news the name you can trust is neptonics neptonics have route package protection basically insurance on your gear so you can have peace of mind Free shipping to the lower 48 when you spend $199 or more. Clear, transparent communication on shipping time and most gear ships in two days. They also have my favorite, a no BS returns policy. That's right, no BS. And it's all backed by one of the strongest names in spearfishing. And it finishes with tonics. And it's not gin and tonic, it's Neptonics. Solid gear that works. Visit Neptonics, buy tough gear. Use the code NOOB10 to save 10%. That's right. Use the code NOOB10, N-O-O-B-10, to save 10% on your order at neptonics.com. Mm-hmm.